talking about Bitcoin as a Kardashev type uh, yeah. technology. Now, people may or may not have heard of this. Uh, correct me where I'm wrong, but it's like there's different levels to the Kardashev scale. You know, at level, I don't know, was it level one? You're harnessing the energy of your whole planet, two, your whole star, three, your whole solar system, et cetera. Um, we talked at the very beginning of this conversation how Bitcoin significantly influences our relationship with energy broadly. Uh, how do you look at Bitcoin in terms of it being a Kardashev scale related technology? I agree. I, I think this is our direct contribution to the economy. Right? Obviously, there is the monetary aspect of the Bitcoin, but the legible direct contribution, regardless of your view on Bitcoin and Bitcoin's place in the universe, right? We are buying energy and we are buying it in bulk mm -hmm. and we are not going anywhere. And so what this does is this incentivizes, it's a market signal, this incentivizes more energy development, right? Mm -hmm. This incentivizes more rhetoric around abundance, right? And, and creating a world where electrons are cheap because we need cheap electrons, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And if we can help spur the development of independent power, right? We're playing our, our incremental role in moving humanity up the, the Kardashev scale, mm -hmm. right? You know, whether, whether it's being the customer of first resort, in, in securing letters of intent for, you know, small modular reactors. Hey, I would love some of that to my base. Stable power, can you do it cheap? I'd, I'd love some of that, right? Or being the customer of last resort for an old bankrupt, you know, wind farm or whatever that needs something to, to really put the juice back into the business model. Mm -hmm. We can be at both sides of that, right? And I think that's, that's a very interesting role that is unique to mining and unique to Bitcoin is that if you think of the culture of, of Bitcoin miners, right? We're, we're, we believe we're at the forefront of FinTech in, mm -hmm. in many ways, right? This is the vanguard of, of the monetary system, right? What's cool is it also puts us somewhat at the vanguard of energy technology mm -hmm. as well, right? So you're familiar with, with DARPA? Of course. Okay, so, yeah. so the Department of Energy has its own version of DARPA, mm -hmm. right? And I was at their conference uh, last year, right? And you know, I'm, you know, I'm a nerd. I love a geek. I love the, I love the ideas and the technologies and I feel like I'm in the future. Right. But now with Bitcoin, potentially me and my peers, we can be in the driver's seat of pushing forward those technologies. Hmm. Right. And going to the, the new innovative technologies and saying, Hey, this is bankable. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I pay cash. I also pay Bitcoin. Right. But, but I, I pay, <laughs> I pay cash and I believe, I believe in you because our culture is different from your traditional energy consumer. Mm -hmm. I use my, my prototypical example, right. It's the fiberglass factory, very energy intensive. Right. They're not going to the ARPA-E conference, right, thinking about small modular sure, reactors, sure. Right? SMRs. And why is it? Is it because the direct relationship yeah. between energy and monetization in this it case? Is, it, it is. It is. I mean, to, to, to use an example of where we, do, where we monetize energy in a very indirect way, mm -hmm. right? If you sit in a coffee shop and you eat a blueberry muffin, okay, that is a very, very, very roundabout way to get the sunlight that was yeah. in the blueberry and it's in the muffin and your Starbucks and you buy the muffin and you eat it, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very, very long path to go from, you know, paying for the energy mm -hmm. basically was, was what you're doing. We really shorten the value chain, yeah. right? And, you know, we show up with our, with our servers, right? With our computers, the ASICs, and we're able to generate value and share in that value creation with our partners effectively immediately as an off taker. Mm -hmm. It's very unique. And we also have the unique ability, right? Or largely unique ability in that we, we can scale up and scale down. Mm -hmm. Right. So I live in Texas. Right. And we had a big winter storm a few years ago. And one of the issues around this winter storm was it forced business interruption. Business interruption for that bakery is, is, is bad, but is not tens of millions of dollars bad. Business interruption for a semiconductor fab is tens of millions of dollars per day in, in, yeah. in losses. Right. That is the last group you want to take offline. Right. Bitcoin mining is a little bit different. Right. Where our ability to start and stop. Yeah. I mean, I'd ideally love to keep my machines going. But we can also be the ones to put our hand up and dial back usage mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. the market forces are indicating someone needs to go offline, yeah. right? And this is something we do in a lot of states. We work on these energy programs, demand response, mm -hmm. and we backstop. So on one hand, you could argue we're playing offense with energy technologies. We're out there, we're looking at nuclear, you know, mm -hmm. we're looking at some of these fascinating new research in solar, battery stuff's interesting too. And geothermal, I mean, I'm very open to meeting with folks that have interesting ways to harness energy because we're gonna move up the Kardashev scale together. But I'm also playing defense, hmm. where we have our existing energy infrastructure, right, which is in some cases a little bit rickety, right? And we can be there bolstering it, mm -hmm. dialing up or dialing back as needed. Interesting. What is so – that might be a little abstract for people, the Kardashev scale. Like, what does that mean? When we sure. say we're moving up, moving – helping move humanity up the Kardashev scale. Sure. 
I don't know, pick your number of years out, but like, what does that world look like and how is it substantively different than the world we live in today? Sure. So if, if I look at the ability of humanity to harness energy, right, you, you go back historically and it was just about getting more energy from the woolly mammoth you hunted than, mm -hmm. <laughs> than you spent trying to chase down the mammoth, right? That's a very primitive human relationship with energy, right? Over time, it's scaled. It really hit a phenomenal inflection point with the steam engine, right? And realizing that you could pump water out of coal mines to then mine more coal, which would power more pumps. Mm -hmm. You can see you kickstart this flywheel, flywheel yeah. right? And then we've, we've, then we, then we harness the atom with uh, nuclear power and et cetera. And fusion is, is in development, right? Where does this go? Well, at a certain point, these three uses of energy, which to me are Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, and robotics, you, you almost fold those back in on developing more energy. Mm, you, you see, see, you use Bitcoin to fund it, you use AI to think through the design, and then you use robotics <laughs> to build it. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that mean? The, co the cost of energy then asymptotically approaches zero in the century ahead or like what? it's a great uh, zero zero and infinity i mean it's it's your core input to everything so yeah, so, so demand abundance is, goes to infinity de demand demand goes very high yeah. it's, it's supply eventually you run into the sun right yeah. and so that's where or few, i mean you run into these interesting dynamics right where yeah. you know the you make something cheaper. There's a, there's a paradox, the Jevons paradox, where you, you, something gets cheaper and you actually use more of it. Yeah. Right. And and this is something where with if you have an, an energy abundance mindset, mm -hmm. right? If if it's if it's or more expensive, you use more of it. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Think, it's more expensive, you use more. Of it, right. So so the idea would be that with um you know with energy, you know the more the more ways we can think to use energy, the more um the more energy we use. Yeah. 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 And then. It's just almost, it is incomprehensible, right? Yeah. Because then what, well, I guess we just start making a lot more people or we go to the stars. Like why are more tech, like visionary tech CEOs, I'm thinking of like the Elon Musk yeah. types, why are they not seizing onto this or not seeing the light of Bitcoin in confluence with all these other technologies that they're so... It's a really bullish on, you know, you so obviously Musk has, has signaled openness yeah. intermittently to, to Bitcoin as a, as a currency, you know, that the, there's a sense, I think that we're going to run and gun with the U S dollar until, until the day blows out. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't think you would find many billionaires that are super excited about other currencies because, you know, if inflation hurts you at, you know, two, three, four, five percent, imagine having a billion dollars. I mean, that is inflation is oh, yeah. really hurting you. And yeah. again, if you own assets, you're a little bit blunted mm -hmm. to inflation because the assets are priced in dollars. And so, you know, maybe they're able to outrun it a bit. And you, you've seen that with some of the performance of equities and mm -hmm. the fixed income market is doing weird things. And, and so they're maybe not as pressed by the, the currency crises as, as the common man or as the everyday American. But to your point, I, I think there was an awakening. And you've seen, you've seen various uh, folks, there's a gentleman in Mexico, there's a few Europeans, you've seen folks signal more of an interest in this, mostly as an asset protection thing, mm -hmm. plus a feeling of not wanting to be left behind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's not that many Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. So so if you want to own a whole Bitcoin, that is going to get increasingly harder. Yeah. Yeah, is it? I was thinking about this earlier today, actually. Like, it's... Money's often analogized to, like, economic water. You know, it's yeah. like something we're all swimming in all the time, but we don't see it. You know, it's not obvious. It's kind of hidden in plain sight. We think through it a lot, but we don't think about it so yeah. much. And so if something were invented that were disruptive to water, you know, like it was, like no one would even see it coming. They'd be like, yeah. why is that even a thing? And in a way, you know, obviously money's changed over time, but gold being foundational hasn't changed that much, right? right? Like any society that stumbled upon gold stuck with gold, basically. Like even today we use fiat, but, you know, the, well, the Fed still holds a lot of gold, right? Yeah, and if you're going to settle a geopolitical dispute or an account, it's going to be settled in gold. So there's like a, it's still geopolitical money, if I could use that yeah. term. And so is that the problem? Is like, we're just talking about such a fundamental disruption that it is just outside everyone's Overton window. So we're a bunch of Bitcoiners like banging this drum to a deaf audience. It's an interesting way to frame it. You know, I find that Bitcoin, I would say, is it the nexus of two of humanity's oldest technologies, mm -hmm. which are money and religion? Mm, okay, interesting. And so you you have currency, you know, debt even predated currency, right? Yeah. Gregory wrote about this. So you have 
you have currency, you've got money, you've got some sort of gold nuggets, you had doubloons, you, you had mm -hmm. money, right? But humanity also has a, a great desire to believe in something greater than themselves, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and deeper truths. And what you find in, in Bitcoin is something that is an immutable ledger, true, anonymous founder, right? So, so it feels like less of a political project than it might be if there was a, a very overt leader, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you have that kind of that cult radicalization because as you said, you go down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and you, know, you realize in, in the case of the global economy, it's turtles all the way down, right? There's, it's just, it's recursive and, <laughs> and dollars are getting printed out of nothing. And there's this, this one official once said, there's infinite money in the Federal Reserve. No. What do you mean there's infinite money? In the, oh, that doesn't sound very finite to yeah. me. So, so you, 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 you get awakened, right? And, and it's almost like when people, you know, a lot of folks turn to spiritualism, religion mm. uh, in moments of crises. Right when they have a life event or something they can't fully explain with their existing framework of, mm -hmm. of the universe and the way the world ought to be, mm -hmm. right? And they, they find faith, right? I find it not improbable that as people's faith in money is shaken, which happens, they will turn to Bitcoin in a right. similar way. Because Bitcoin's unshakable. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's got a few very basic core tenets. It, it has something that creates value for you, right? Yeah. It's a product you want. No one can take it from you. Kind of like, yeah. like faith, right? And yeah. so I, I find that, unfortunately, you know, pe people turn to faith often in times of hardship. Yeah. People will probably turn to Bitcoin as a currency in times of hardship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I say this something similar, right? That it's, we often say pain as information, right? It's uh, the yes. thing that causes you to put yourself into a new formation. Mm. And so most people, myself included, tend to learn a lot of things the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how many, you know, accounts you've heard from other people or books you've read about it. Like sometimes you just gotta go and touch that hot stove for yourself. You do. You to do. Know what's learn going it on. firsthand. Um and Bitcoin, that's an interesting one because it is we talk about this a lot. Bitcoin is the unity of opposites. Mm. And it is kind of, it's obviously religious in a sense, right? There's a belief system associated with any money. Um, but Bitcoin is rooted in, you know, mathematics, thermodynamics, Darwinian self-preservation, like these very hardcore scientific paradigms that we exist in. And somehow it's the both. It's yeah, like... Best of both worlds. Again, yeah. it's, it's Bitcoin is rules, not rulers, mm -hmm. right? So that's a good religion. It's a good religion. It's a good religion. <laughs>